Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf, and weekly download episode number 63, which is my weekly tech and PC gaming news series. As you can already see, today I'm going to be playing some more NBA 2K18. If you're following me on social media, then you'll know how addicted I am to this game, so sorry for the lack of variety lately. I don't have a coffee today, but I am sipping on a bottle of water. Make sure you guys let me know in the comment section what you're sipping on. Let's get into it. The OPC is the official gaming chair of Zach's Tech Turf and Weekly Download, and it's one of the best gaming chair options for those of us on a budget. Go check out my full review video by clicking the link in the description, and don't forget to use discount code ZTT or my link to save yourself 10 bucks. Alright, so to start off the tech news this week, which by the way, this week is mostly tech news and barely any PC gaming news, another website has been found with underlying code that makes users mine cryptocurrencies for them. The website is Showtime, which probably gets hundreds of thousands of users per hour, and this is now the second website that we are hearing about this, as I just explained this in last week's episode with the Pirate Bay. Basically, as long as you have their web page open, there's a piece of code that forces your CPU to mine cryptocurrencies for them until you close their web page. Now you might be asking yourself about the CPU based cryptocurrencies as we've lately been only seeing that GPU mining is profitable. That's still correct. CPU based mining doesn't earn that much money as a Ryzen 7 can only earn about a dollar a day. But when you have thousands and thousands of users mining all of that at the same time without knowing it, that's a lot of money. Since being discovered Showtime has removed the code from their website and has yet to make a comment about it. I started off this week's news because this is getting kind of ridiculous ridiculous in my opinion. How many other websites do you think are out there that are abusing our hardware to make them cryptocurrencies? You guys gotta let me know what you think about this down in the comment section. Next up, Intel officially formally introduced their 8th generation Coffee Lake desktop CPUs this weekend and as you would expect, they're doing everything they can to combat Ryzen. They announced all sorts of specs, speeds, and gaming results that I'll have linked down in the description, which is where I link everything I talk about by the way, but the one CPU I'm personally interested interested in is the 8700K. They announced that it will be a 6 core 12 thread chip and Intel even claimed it as the best gaming desktop processor ever. As you guys might know, Ryzen 7 released with all these cores and threads and amazing computing performance, but despite only having 4 cores and 4 threads, the Intel 7700K is still better for gaming. Intel has nailed down single core performance and the 8700K follows suit and will likely beat out any Ryzen chip in terms of gaming. Moving on the Atari box was just semi revealed this week and it actually looks like a pretty solid product. Just a couple months ago Atari announced that they were getting back into the hardware business and were working on something big. Well here it is, the Atari box will cost between $250 and $300 and most importantly it will be running an open Linux operating system meaning that it will be able to do much more than just play old Atari games. The GM for the Atari box project stressed that this is a completely open project and they want you to do whatever you want to do with the Atari box. They are set to launch a crowdfunding campaign over on Indiegogo this fall and the box should be ready to ship out in the spring of 2018. As you guys might know, RAM prices of DDR4 memory have pretty much doubled over the last year which is absolutely awful, but in lighter news, DDR5 is coming, as you would expect. A company called Rambus announced this week that they have the first ever functional DDR5 DIMM prototype. They also expect once DDR5 comes to consumer desktops, the base frequency will be around 4000 800 megahertz. This is only a bit faster than the higher speed DDR4 modules that we are seeing however. They don't expect DDR5 to be really available until 2019 however, so hopefully these DDR4 prices go down before that. AMD Vega graphics cards can finally be configured in Crossfire with AMD's latest Crimson Relive driver, but good luck getting your hands on one of them at a good price, let alone two. Driver edition 17.9.2 supports up to two-way multi-GPU support for the Vega cards and even new games like Project Cars 2 will immediately take advantage of it. Just like with all multi-GPU setups, every game will utilize the graphics cards differently and some games don't support multi-GPUs at all, so just be aware of that. While I'm talking about this, for all my new PC builders and gamers out there, if you're ever debating about two graphics cards or one for your new PC build, you almost always want to go with a single GPU. For example, if you're debating about getting either two 1060s or a single 1070, you almost always want to go with the 1070. 
I know that seems obvious for some, but I see that question asked a lot. And to wrap up the tech news, Intel has also announced this week that they've officially killed off their Project Alloy project and will not continue it. Project Alloy was a standalone VR headset that didn't have to be hooked up to a PC and it was completely powered on its own. Intel stated that they cancelled it for two reasons, a lack of consumer interest and a lack of power without a separate PC. Go figure. To start off the very short week of PC gaming news, I guess I gotta include all this PUBG and Fortnite drama even though I personally really don't care about it. Basically the people over at PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds are upset about Fortnite's new 100 player battle royale mode as it resembles the famous PUBG gameplay a bit too much. Turns out that they aren't quite upset with the similar gameplay as we originally thought, but the fact that Fortnite is being advertised comparing it specifically to PUBG is what they're mad at. I guess that makes sense, but like I said, I don't really care about this kind of game developer drama, but I figured you guys wanted to hear about it anyway. And to wrap up the PC gaming news this week, a Half-Life mod called Caged is out now on Steam and it's a free mod that's created by someone that actually used to work at Valve. It's dubbed as a short single player episode and the reviews are actually pretty high on Steam. You do however require a copy of Half-Life on your system and the last time I checked there weren't any warnings about that when I was looking at it, so just be aware of that. Have any of you guys tested this out? Let me know in the comment section. Well that wraps up weekly download episode number 63. Make sure you guys let me know in the comment section what your favorite tech or PC gaming news was this week or if I missed anything. Well hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel and as always thank you for watching and please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.